So then we are back with more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services. This translation used is from the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from then the existing manuscripts of the prophets of Yahweh given as daily understanding of the time of the end as per the description of the Torah, the prophets and the writings. As then in Yerushia we find then in 61st chapter the time of reduction and also the second anointing granted to the set apart. So then during the time of the Mashiach when he was spring feasting or then completing the spring feast he was then explaining the mysteries of the Torah, the prophets and the writings to his people. And then at some point in the first gospel of Metichiahu, Metichiahu was a Levite. He was very acquainted with the laws and the Torah. And he was also very acquainted and familiar with the works of the tabernacle. Thus then you receive the first gospel from the viewpoint of a Levite, extremely important, because the Mashiach, he brought the first anointing for the second tabernacle services related primarily with Levites the work of the tabernacle. So then the Mashiach was explaining these areas at some point during the time of his teachings he was explaining those who were hearing the mystery of the Torah. At certain point he was explaining those areas of mysteries related with his anointing yet to come during the time of Shavuot and then obviously the seven functions of Ruach HaKodesh. So then later, as he was explaining the types of soil, when the Mashiach was unveiling his presence as then his thousand years of guidelines or then rulership of heaven's understandings on how then to direct the nations. He was born as the king. So then his thousand years had started when he then began to complete the spring feast and also when he was born until 1009. So then obviously when the Mashiach was explaining the many areas of the kinds of ground he was speaking then the types of hearings of the people. The Mashiach was then brought for the salvation plans continuation from the time of Yahweh's salvation of his people from the land of Egypt as his slaves. So then the Mashiach was explaining then the anointing to come and that's why then the people they trained for more than a thousand years and they came to receive then the anointing. But they had to be filtered. The Mashiach found then a city not closed, not secluded, as per instructions and then there were laws and contaminated sins in the holy city and the Mashiach had to go through those first and then delegate responsibilities. The Mashiach was not to make Jerusalem the kingdom of Shlimon, neither the restoration of Shlimon's kingdom. The Mashiach came and he brought the first anointing for the second tabernacle services where his people would then give directives from the holy cities. So it was. During the time he was then filtering the people, there were people over there related with money, some of the people related with their own gains, and then some of them, they were there only for the nourishment what the Mashiach was then providing. However, then the Mashiach, when he came to the types of soil, or then the types of people hearing the word, and then receiving it, he compared them. Some of them rocky, some of them then thorny, and some of them then sandy. And then there were types of people with great ground, or then fertile soil, where then fruit would bear. When the Mashiach came to the point of explaining then the cares of the world, the Mashiach then is explaining a section of it where then he explains. And when trouble or persecution comes, then he is quickly then withdrawn because of the word. They can't stand truth to the word of Yahweh. And what was sown in a thorny place is he that hears the word and he then cares so much for his own. Then the world then takes over and the deception of riches then choke the word. What the Mashiach is explaining is the very fact of life 
regarding then a person that wants to be in a calm place, wants to have a family, wants to kind of have an easy life. Those are the cares of the world. That's why then Shaliak Shaul later said, you can't be involved with a type of a lifestyle so tranquil and then you are not ready to be a soldier for the general Yahweh Yeshua. You have to make a choice. Either then you are succumbed by the world's ways, by your own desires of cares and riches and niceties and tranquility, or then you engage yourself in a war and then being with the Messiah and then provide nourishment and the Spirit from the Torah to those who are hearing so they can get refreshed. This is what the Messiah was explaining. So unfortunately in this country they had then this idea of making their families their own idols. They made families in the country as their own idols and it became a prosperity gospel for themselves for their own gain. The Messiah was against it and he said those who are then involved with those objectives primarily are those who do not produce any fruit. This is what the Messiah said, cares of the world, and then having another job, and then having another family member, and then having another car, and then having another friend. The Messiah said those are the cares of the world. He's not saying the cares are evil. He's simply saying when you understand what the Messiah was then bringing in terms of the anointing, you have then to make a choice, but then when you do make your choice, then when you have a choice of having a tranquil life, you want to have a nice job, a peaceful life, you do not want to get involved in a ministry, you do not want to be a soldier for the king, then you do not produce any fruit. That's why churches they don't work, because they don't produce fruit. They produce conveniences of their own, as when then the prophet was explaining, you are building then your own cisterns. They do not want to be anymore dependent upon Yahweh's directives, but then they rather prefer having themselves than involved in lifestyles not producing any fruit. Yet they made their own choices and conveniences their own gods. And they proclaim a Messiah outside of the Holy Tabernacles non-existent, and then they portray themselves as then godly when they are not. Because the Messiah was saying the cares of the world then chokes the word and the desire for riches. So then, obviously Shaliak Shaul, the ram of the Torah, he always was explaining these factors and he said even to Timothy. Timothy was a very shy person and he came from a nice family. However, he did not have the personality to take on the ministry based upon an understanding of the Messiah as a soldier doing his duties. The Messiah was absolutely a general during the time he was explaining the second tabernacle services. When the anointing would come for his people then to launch the holy cities of the second tabernacle services, they had a tendency of going back to the kingdom of Shilimon. That was then the big problem because during the time of Shilimon the nation had so much money, had so much they barely worked during those years. They want an easy life, they want to have a tranquil life and directed the world from a very nice position and the Messiah said no. They had to launch themselves and then form the holy cities and direct the Gentiles as per the instructions so then the second portion of the Torah would be then completed via the autumn feast. These were then the objectives. So then where we find ourselves during this time, the people, they always want niceties, they always want to be tranquil, they don't want to have any kind of a trouble, and then they are not worthy for the work of the kingdom. Because they are so much involved with their own cares and their own ways of thinking. And then Shaliak Shaul even himself said to Timothy, then you have to act as a soldier. But then Timothy came from a family that was very nice. He was very then crude in himself. He did not understand what it meant then to be a true soldier for the work of the kingdom. So then obviously Shaliak Shaul ended up giving up. Timothy was not the kind of a person for the kingdom. And after then the second Timothy, when he was so much after Timothy, we don't hear any more of him. 
so then did not produce much fruit. Then part of it obviously is related with his own fears in confronting the elders of the first tabernacle service. He couldn't do it. But when Shaliak Shaul was around, then they would listen. Because Shaliak Shaul was sent to prepare his people and to delegate responsibilities then for them to start the holy cities as per instructions. Because the Messiah said to his people in the 23rd chapter of the first gospel of the Levite, Metichiah, he said, Whatsoever Moses told you to do and observe this, do and observe, because he was a Levite, he knew what he was talking about. Luke, however, and Mark were Gentiles, so you have to be cautious on how to read those, because they were from Gentile world. They have a Gentile agenda and not Yahweh's agenda. However, Yahanan, then he was a Shaliak of the time of the Messiah. So then you can much more focus in the writings of Yahanan. But then you understand what it takes. In the, these days, there are not very many people that do want to place their own lives on the line for the, being a soldier for the Messiah and being a ram as then Shaliak Shaul was. But this is precisely what the Messiah was saying. It takes a person of this kind to produce fruit. And then to be a enlightenment for other people when they hear the words of Yahweh. And this is what the Messiah was after. So then, when he explains these areas, then previously the Messiah said, It is amazing because the prophets of old, before yourselves, they were eager to hear these mysteries. What he was saying is this. You people, you hear the mysteries of the Torah, and you don't get changed. There were then prophets prior of the time of the completion of the Spring Feast. They were eager to be obedient, to give their lives for the cause. And they never had a chance. And the Messiah was explaining those mysteries, A, they don't change. It is incredible. The Messiah was amazed because he said very precisely there were people during the time that they were absolutely eager in understanding these areas, yet they were given and they did not change. And some of them, they do absolutely the contrary when they hear the words of Yahweh, then they retract to their own lifestyles and they want to do what they want to do. The world has such a grip in their lives when they hear the words that they want to do the contrary or what the Messiah is explaining. It is incredible. This is what they were doing during his time. So then we have to ask ourselves what the Messiah expected from us, but then from the viewpoint of a soldier. You are not going to be a mamby pamby family member and then having the cares of the world and then taking care of the kingdom. You are not going to do both. Because the Messiah already said, those who are of the line of the cares of the world, they do not produce any fruit. The Messiah is not against having families, but he's saying if a person wants to produce fruit, it has to be done in a certain way and have to be a soldier for the king. Had to be then a Torah person and then a ram as Shaliak Shaul was. Otherwise, you get categorized in a family tranquil life and you produce no fruit. That's why churches are absolutely at no use. Because the objective at the moment is then the reduction of time and then also the restoration of the first holy city and then the other cities. As per then Yerushiahu the 61st chapter and then Yerushiahu 1.8. So then we understand if you want to have a tranquil life, a nice, nice life, a nice job and then nice money and then do what you want, you won't be able to bear fruit. Simple as ABC. So then you have to make a choice in what kind of a lifestyle you want to live or if you want to produce fruit. Because those that do not produce fruit, Yahweh then the Creator takes away, He cuts it and He burns it. Meaning you are not saved. There are, however, exclusions from these areas when a person is from a nice, nice family, then a person becomes acquainted with the work of the Messiah. Then it's another situation. When a person is conscientious of what it takes and then decides to go with the world's flow and then being inundated with the cares of the world, so to speak, a person can bear much fruit. 
This is what she is explaining. So please stay tuned, much more coming up because the Mashiach is then explaining of his anointing and what it takes to get these information to those who are from the Messianic line, the Hebraic line, so they can then reduce their propensities of being with the world and then return to the holy services. This is what the Mashiach then is asking of them. Because then chapter 1, 7 and 1, 8 of Revelation, then the Autumn Feast explains, come out of them, my people, and then return to the services because the Autumn Feast is coming. This is what the Messiah is saying. And I'm going to explore more later then. Please stay tuned. Much more coming up.